Have you ever wondered which is the best 50mm APO lens for your Leica camera? In this video I'll compare the Voigtlander APO Lanthar 50mm f2 to the Leica SL50 f2 Leica L mount APO lens. If you'd like to see the full video on the APO Voigtlander I'll link that at the end too. Hi guys, Matt here from MrLeica.com. If you saw my recent review of the Leica SL2S camera versus the Leica SL, you will know that I use these two mentioned lenses and I headed to London to visit the Leica Mayfair store to ask if I could borrow both the Leica SL2S but also their 50mm SL APO lens. And I was interested to see how it compared to my Voigtlander 50 f2 APO that I now own. Here you can see both cameras and both lenses, so all photos in this video are shot with the Leica SL2S or the Leica SL and obviously with either of the two lenses being tested. I did take all the photos despite Justina there having the camera. All photos were shot with available light only, no reflectors and just walking around looking for light as I do on my photo walks. Uh, I was alternating between both cameras during the shoot and then I also changed lenses between the bodies to try to rule out any variation between the camera bodies so we can any kind of differences relate to just the lenses. Poor Justine was freezing. Uh, if you want to follow her, you can find Justine on my Instagram at MrLeica.com. Uh, there'll be links in the description below. Okay, so let's get into the geeky part of the test, the pixel peeping. So first I'll share this screen to show that for all photos in this test, every photo is shot with the lens is wide open at f2. And you can see the details there of the lens being used, the ISO and everything else that you may be interested in. So the photos on the left are the Leica lens and the photos on the right are the Voigtlander lens. All photos are unedited raw files. This is straight out of camera, green shot from Lightroom. Okay, so what are you noticing? The first thing I noticed was the Leica lens seems to be roughly half a stop brighter than the Voigtlander lens. In most situations, there's a couple where it's more even, but for lots of photos, you can see on the left, the the SL lens is brighter than the, the Voigtlander, which was interesting with both lenses shot at the same shutter speed, same ISO, same aperture of f2. I did some close-up crops so you can see how the rendering looks, so feel free to pause the video if you're trying to pixel peep and see how the rendering is if, say, you're looking to buy either of these two lenses. Uh, prices included at the end. Uh, the second thing you may notice is the Leica seems to have a lower contrast and maybe a smoother rendering, where the Voigtlander seems to have a higher contrast. This could be partly from shooting into the sun, so the Voigtlander seems to have better flare control versus the Leica, as you can see in these images, hopefully. Both lenses are very sharp, even at f2, focusing on the near side for all photos, either autofocus on the SL lens or manual focus with the Voigtlander lens. Here's some behind the scenes clips to show me in action using both cameras. You can see the light, it's kind of bouncing all over the place from the building, so it was working as both a reflector, bouncing off the floor and opposite walls as well as behind her to give her a hair light. Uh, because she's had a, she's got blonde hair, a light coloured top and a light coloured coat and the floor was quite bright, it was quite difficult lighting for her for me to make her look as amazing as I could so in colours probably better than black and white and black and white everything just looked too white. Uh, I asked her to look down here so I could photo the top of her eyelashes and catch her in the hair to see how the, the two lenses compared. Uh, Justina is amazing she kept still for me while I swapped between the two cameras to make it similar-ish. I know it's not perfect but uh, to give you guys something to, to compare to. I realised this is a limited test with both lenses only being used wide open at f2 and I realised by only shooting one person again it's a limited test to what these lenses can do but hopefully it'll give you some idea of whether you want to maybe investigate further if you are looking to buy either of these two lenses. So here's the resulting photos from the clips that you just saw and you can see the rendering in the background. Here the light was very bright so I was backlighting her to try to keep the, the sun off her face. And as you'll see in a second as we zoom in, the detail is pretty amazing on both but I think the Voigtlander is very slightly sharper, possibly helped by the higher contrast. As we moved our location slightly, it was really bright from all sides, so Justina was struggling to keep her eyes open. I always recommend telling your models to bring sunglasses if it's, there's any chance of sunshine on the day. <laughs> we did some eyes closed ones to make it easier for her. One thing to note is keeping on the colours, because to my eyes the Leica seems to be warmer and the Voigtlander seems to be cooler. To try to make the photos more comparable, I made myself a little Mr. Leica preset for the Apo lenses to make the Voigtlander hopefully similar colours to the Leica. It's not perfect, but I've made it warmer and you can see my settings if you just skip back a little bit. And now it's maybe more similar in terms of colours. This is back to the original colours and you can see the Voigtlander is obviously quite a lot cooler. You can see the blues a lot more. Personally, I prefer the Leica colours for skin tones, but it depends on what you're photographing, I think. 
If you enjoy shooting film as well as digital, the same as me, I'd say the like SL Apo has got more of a Kodak gold look in terms of warm tones, which is very flattering for portraits. Voigtlander has got cooler tones. In this photo, again, you see me matching the colours to try to make them more comparable in terms of the warmth. And you can see you can mimic the, the Leica look to a certain extent. I remembered halfway through the shoot that I had my brother's sunglasses in my bag, so I lent them to Justina, so A, it gave a slightly different look, and also it was a bit easier for her to keep her eyes open. Uh, the easiest thing to do if shooting models or portraits on a sunny day is just have the sun on the back of their head, then us as the photographer shoot into the sun, and that'll give you the most flattering look. So here's the, the resulting photos from the clip we just saw, and again you can see the colour differences especially. Another thing I wanted to test was how the bokeh and the rendering looked, so here's me photographing the roof of the, the station in London and here's a bokeh test. You can see the Lycra SL bokeh is much more pronounced because the SL lens is focused closer than the range from a coupled Leica M lenses or VM lenses from Voigtlander. So before we get to the verdict, the big question, how much do these two lenses cost? The Leica version costs around $5,000 if you buy them from B&H in the US or $1,000 for the Voigtlander version, so five times cheaper. If you're in the UK, these lenses cost $4,000 for the Leica and around £900 for the Voigtlander, say from Robert White. If you want to buy used, you can go to MBP, around £3,000 the Leica, or say on eBay, around seven to 800 for the Voigtlander. So the big question, which was the best lens in the test? So to my eyes, the Leica SL has warmer colours, probably more saturated, with lower contrast and maybe smoother tones, maybe more like a Leica like R lens in terms of the warm look kit that it gives. It's an autofocus lens and it has a weather ceiling. However, these lenses are very big and heavy compared to the smaller Leica like M lenses and the cost, it's five times more expensive than the Voigtlander lens. The Voigtlander, on the other hand, showed cooler colours, higher contrast and less smooth tones, so I put neutral tones. The lens is a range front coupled manual focus, so it has no autofocus and no weather ceiling, the same as all other like M out lenses. And so you may be wondering which is my favourite. I prefer the colours and the softer rendering of the Leica lens, especially for my female portraits, but I prefer the, the size and weight of the Voigtlander. I obviously prefer the Voigtlander in terms of price being five times cheaper and I think you can probably make yourself a preset to mimic a lot of the look that the Leica gives compared to the Voigtlander. If you want me to make a Mr. Leica Apo preset to apply to your Voigtlander lens let me know and I can make it available on the Mr. Leica website. Uh, obviously both lenses make amazing photos both very sharp wide open. Let me know in the comments which was the winner for you and if money was no object which lens would you get. The ideal lens for me would be the Leica look in the Voigtlander size and packaging. That would be the perfect combination, I think. If you enjoyed this video, please smash the like button. And as always, a massive thanks to my patrons.